Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Lords of the Fallen, with me, Bregaton. Lords of the Fallen was developed by CI Games in Deck 13, and published by CI Games. It was released in October of 2014, and is a Souls-like, dark fantasy RPG. This will not be a blind playthrough, as I have played through this game a couple of times in the past, though those runs were on console, this will be on PC with a controller. Let's go and jump in and start a new game. First up is our magic type selection. You have three options. Brawling, Deception, and Solace. For this run, I will go Brawling, but I am going to read through all of them because there's an option to swap them later if you so wish. So, Brawling. The art of Brawling is to overwhelm your opponent with pure force and mighty spells. The first spell you get is Prayer, which is actually a spell shared between all three magic types. A motionless clone that attracts enemy attention to give Harkin advantage. Over time, it will also restore some of your health. What it doesn't tell you here is that it can be used to solve puzzles later in the game, since the spell can hold down pressure plates. We'll get into that as we play through. Now the second spell is Rage, a surrounding force that gives more damage, attack power, and removes energy restrictions. And Quake, which is the most important spell in this tree. Your most powerful ally coming down to help you and slam your enemies with a giant hammer, wreaking havoc. And Ram. A powerful charging force that, apart from damaging, can stagger or knock down the enemies. Deception. Deceiving the enemies and injuring them beyond recovery is the main focus of the deception magic type. It also starts with prayer and shift. Arkin moves into shadow dimension. Any attack he deals is devastating, but brings him back into view. Stab. A blood-seeking supernatural assassin that sprints towards its prey to severely damage it or take its life. And mimic. A phase of magic following you, copying your moves and repeating the damage you've done. Then Solace. Magic taught by scholars contains mostly defensive spells to heal and protect yourself. It also starts with Prayer and Shelter. A protective shell that highly increases all types of defense and mirrors the incoming damage. Daze. A powerful force that inflicts fear upon the enemies, slowing them down and lowering defenses. And Punishment. Eye for an eye. Enemy attacks are being revenged by stunning the opponent. So as I said before, I'm going to take Brawling. Then we get to select our starting equipment. You have three sets, the set of the Warrior, Rogue, and Cleric. Uh, the Warrior set starts with a steel sword and a heavy shield. The standard gear given to pardoned prisoners recruited to the army. Steel armored plates will give the soldier exceptional defense at the cost of agility. A purpose-built sword and shield will complement this set. The set of Rogue starts with steel daggers and a buckler. Mostly worn by thieves and scoundrels, this leather armor allows for high mobility. A set of daggers are simple but very fast at deadly weapons. A buckler shield, mostly used to counterattack the enemy, rounds off this kit. And set of the Cleric, which is the set I'll be going for a couple reasons. One, I think it looks the coolest, and it starts with a hammer, which is my favorite weapon type. And two, I consider this the cannon set which you'll see why here in a moment. So set of the Cleric starts with the Defiance, which is a uniquely named Hammer, and a Crest Shield. A set forged by and for the Monks of the North. A balance between mobility and defense, coupled with a formidable blunt weapon and high quality shield, makes us a solid choice for an all-rounder. All right, here's a summary. Uh, so you play as Harkin. There isn't a true character creator in this game. You select your magic type and equipment, but you have to play as a set character. Brawlers never consider themselves too good for a fight, whether they are starting it themselves or rise to the provocations of others. Our attributes are 9 in Strength, 12 in Vitality, 12 in Faith, 8 in Endurance, 8 in Agility, and 0 in Luck. We start with 3 Health Potions and 1 Magic Energy Shard. Fallen God, creator and destroyer of worlds, hear my vow.
Hear my vow. My vow of defiance. Keystone, Hand of God Mountains. A different time, a different war. The monastery's ahead. I wonder if it is still safe. Either way, our quest for Antanas nears a conclusion. I hope he's worth all the men we've lost on our way here. I'm not going to read the tutorial tips out loud. I'm going to use them to refresh my memory, though. Stuff you see popping up now are some DLC packs that I have installed. Alright, let's go over what we just got. As our cleric set, it shares a description across all pieces. Very well rounded armor, providing enough protection and balance to keep a steady hand, especially while casting spells. We saw the Crest Shield, a decorative shield embellished with lineage ornaments. The blacksmith could have cared a bit more about the protection it gives instead of how it looks. And the weapon we start with is Defiance. It's not true that a simple weapon can cast a powerful spell. With a really big weapon, one gains enough will and confidence to do it anyway. It's pretty solid, but we do have a better hammer here with Thek, which we got from the Demonic Weapons Pack. Oh, sorry, with Margear. Margir is an ancient Adalak word meaning friends. Unleash the power of this weapon, we must trust in it completely and not use a shield. It consumes less energy when dual wielding. And then Ahir. This weapon can be effective both for striking and blocking, and the name is ambiguous because its Adalak meaning is the one who. Improved block defense when used with both hands. And Thek. Only the Elder know that Thek is an ancient word for stealing. But anyone using this hammer will find out that it gives magical energy with each hit. Successful hits drain magic. It also does a little bit more damage than Defiance. We have a couple attribute point shards as well. Let's go ahead and pop these. A spell point shard. We'll go ahead and pop that. 
and we'll save these. So a neat mechanic in this game is with the health potions. If you're trying to drink one and you get hit, you'll actually lose it permanently because it'll get knocked out of your hand and it'll shatter on the ground. So it's important to be... Oh, more equipment. Be very careful when using it. Alright, so we also have the uh, lion set. Uh, crafters who make good armor like a touch of finesse in their work. This one has been engraved with lion symbols which represent bravery. I'm not going to use it because it's heavy and I want to be mobile right now. But we'll see what it looks like. I think one of the strengths of this game is its aesthetic. We got the Scream Hammer. There's a little bit more damage than Thick. And it has a rune slot. Uh, one of the rare human weapons containing a slot for a magical rune to be crafted into. Although once crafted, it doesn't really scream. And for one more damage, I don't think it costs you more energy to use. It's worth it. The weight's probably not worth it either. Okay, here's the line set. It's pretty sweet looking. Alright, let's get started. First things first, you may have noticed in the opening cutscene that there is a shard up there above the door. This game is riddled with secrets. Now we can't actually get to it yet. We need to find a key first. But this door leads to it. Once we find the key, we can access it. Before we talk to Kazlo, we're going to go through this door here. Do some exploring. We saw we took some damage even though we blocked that attack. Uh, the shield does not have 100% physical resist. I believe it's 80%. Right, there is an enemy around this corner. Yep. You do want to break everything you come across. One, because it might hold an item. And two, there might be a hidden passage behind it. This game isn't very big, but there are a lot of little secrets tucked into just about every corner. It is in me, and it is changing me, my skull. The bones are moving, growing. It does not feel like poison in my veins, more like liquid darkness. We have seen with others what happens next. Eyesight goes first, then follows sanity. Brother William, brother Peter and I won't let the disease take us. We will choose death before it chooses us. Oh, one thing I want to touch on real quick is if you're trying to play this game on PC, on Windows 10, I guess, or on 11, you want to go in here and go to Advanced Settings under Display and turn off NVIDIA Turbulence because if that's turned on, at least for me, the game would freeze like every few minutes and it was unplayable because once it froze, it wouldn't unfreeze. You have to close out of the program in order to do anything on your PC. So 
So one thing this game gets a lot of flack for is how slow your character moves. Personally, I see that as the strength of the game. I like the feeling of how slow and clunky he is and how much weight uh, both your character and weapons feel like they have behind them. I got our first extra health potion. One of our first secret areas as well. Yeah, I quite enjoy this game. It's really the aesthetic and the sound design. I think the sound design is fantastic. Like, little things. For instance, how the fire sounds. How your character sounds when he's walking around. I gotta watch out for that grab attack. You can't block it and it'll latch onto you and start biting you. Dear Father, the fires on the horizon, they are spreading towards our village. I beg you, be careful. Something evil is happening. I can feel that. You can always seek refuge here, in the monastery. Whatever happens, Antanas can save us. Please, please, be safe. One thing I was never a fan of is after you kill an enemy, they'll still make noises on the ground. Dog past it, and you'll hear what you think is another enemy around the corner, but it's the guy you just killed. So it's not a flawless game. It's got its quirks, but it's got its strengths as well. Even the little shards you pick up when you pick them up have a really cool, satisfying sound to them. Giant key. Can't activate this yet. Uh, that's basically it's a save point. Also, we can upgrade your character. one of those real quick. Found a parry. I don't remember. I know certain shield types can't parry. The tower shield, instead of parrying, you can put it into the ground. There we go. We have a shield bash, but I think it also acts as a parry. I could be misremembering. I know the buckler for sure has a parry.
These things keep coming. We fight back, but there are too many of them. It is sickening to see them move. Their limbs twist and turn in ways they're not supposed to. And their smell. It's like fire and death creeping up your nose. One of the creatures we were fighting spat on us. The saliva hit my eye. It burned, and it burns deeper into me. I've found a key. What are you waiting for? Open the door. Support me. I could use some help. Here. This might be useful. All right, our first boss fight. So something neat about this game is every boss fight, after you defeat the boss, you will get their weapon. But if you want the best version of their weapon, you'll have to meet a secret criteria. This first boss, you can't be hit by him once. So we take it nice and slow. Got a little run attack. When it's safe to do so. So you notice he has four bars on his health bar. After each one, he gets a little faster. He loses some armor, so that's moving a little bit more quickly. And his attacks get a little bit more elaborate. Overall, this boss is a fairly simple fight. It is the introductory boss after all we fought. But less than 10 enemies up to this point, so... They can't make him too fancy. I never really found any of the bosses in this game to be particularly challenging anyway. The hardest part was finding out the secret criteria for their... Legendary version. I think it's legendary. Is the quality. It's gold.
Close. <laughs> it's just a matter of staying away from him. Again, he's not... Not a difficult fight. We get the Persistence Greatsword. The Rogar is said to be fierce opponents, and fighting them is something that those who have survived won't ever forget. Rogar has 15 strength. On one hand, heavy attack sends a tremor, which we saw the first warden using himself, so. So for just defeating the boss, you get the purple version of the weapon. Uh, for you uh, completing their secret criteria, you get the yellow version or gold version. So I might be stumbling over my words a little bit. I've been trying to record this for a very long time. But the game kept freezing on me until I finally turned off the right setting. So my throat is a little hoarse. So we do attribute points or spell points. I'm gonna focus more on attribute points early on. Let's read all of our stats. The strength, a damage and maximum equipment burden. Affects not only the damage dealt with strength based weapons, but also slightly increases your ability to carry heavier gear. Vitality, gives you health. Determines the amount of your health. It also has a slight effect on health potion effectiveness. Faith, damage and magic. Increases the amount of magic you can, you can use the spells and the gauntlet, which we haven't been introduced to yet. And also boosts the damage of magical weapons. Endurance. Gives you energy and also maximum equipment burden. Affects the amount of energy you have and significantly increases the ability to carry heavy gear. Agility. Gives you damage and energy. Boosts the damage dealt with fast weapons, but also gives you a slight increase in energy. And luck. You need more luck to get better rewards for killing opponents, but also helps you to get better crafting materials. I think endurance is probably the most important early on. Let me see what my hammer scales with. Yeah, 
It does scale with strength, but barely. Scream scales with faith, but only by 3%. Which I find a little odd considering how much it weighs. So a couple points in endurance. Yeah, so you can also get the other magic types here. I'm going to put a point into prayer. Because the utility it provides is fantastic. It's actually useful in that first fight. I could have put this point into it earlier and used it, but... What's done is done. Uh, let's do a spell point, because I do want rage. It's very good. Keep doing that. There we go. We're going to run out strength to 10 as well. Alright, so using this refills your health potions. It also resets all the enemies in the area. I could have held off on doing that. Well, I'm not going to lay back through. Actually, let's go this way. I need to grab that key so I can grab the Shard of Heroes. Oh, missed my jump. We'll get back to that. Oh yeah, you also get better loot the longer you go without uh, activating one of those save points. Oh, it's got the warrior set. Didn't read the description for that. Armor crafted for durability has been designed and forged to withstand damage. It is not necessarily for comfort. Let's go and see what it looks like. Again, I think the armor and weapon design in this game is fantastic. So that's the uh, starting set for the soldier class. Banishing the God. The three men that were known as the judges parted ways forever. Apart from their common goal, they were very different in every possible way. Three statues were built for them on the square of the judges, displaying the distinct paths they had taken. These statues hold a secret as if it were their heart, but it is retained by the stone. Only the shard of heroes could make that heart beat, and only an unearthly force could tear it out. So that's a clue to how you use the Shard of Heroes here. Well, sorry, when we go pick it up. I'm gonna grab this note as well. What exactly were the Lords? They wielded power beyond our understanding. They fought fiercely, they blindly followed the God. Anyone who tried to talk to them, reason with them, failed. The Lords did not come for discussion. They came to serve their purpose. To lead the Rogar army against the humans. Oh yeah, let's drop the prayer spell real quick. So we activate it. Get these little decoy behind. You can use that to activate pressure plates for certain puzzles later on. 
enemies will also automatically target that instead of you. That's why it's so good in this fight, because while he's coming for you, you activate this and you go behind him and hit him in the back. Start of Heroes. There's a couple things you can do with it, but regardless, it has to be these statues that we'll see at the second and fourth? Fifth? Sixth? There's an arena where we fight uh, two separate bosses throughout the game, and there's three statues there. You put the Shard of Heroes into one of them, and you can either get a weapon out of it or I think change your class. And that's the other option. But we'll get to that when we get to that. For now, I'm going to call it here. Hopefully you guys are in, or enjoy it. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.